you do not need to be particularly involved with the smartphone world to notice the considerable and more importantly constant growth in device's dimensions. This observation has been cemented over time and it appears that LG is next in turn. Still hot of the conveyor belt, the high-end LG G Pro 2 is one big phone at 5.9 inches. That's a considerable jump from its 5.5-inch predecessor, the original G Pro. But while the phablet form factor may have been something pushed down our throats by manufacturers initially, there is no denying that the wider public response has been overwhelmingly positive. Demand for phablets is now so large that pretty much every handset maker is scraping to get a phablet of their own out on the market. But the G Pro is not just any phablet. Packing a potent quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor and 3GB of RAM, the device handles everything and anything you throw at it with finesse. And the same excellent results are achieved by this optically stabilized 30 megapixel camera on the rear of the phone. Now, before we get into this, do keep in mind that our review unit is the Korean version, which may differ in some aspects from the international model that we expect to reach the shores of Europe and the States in the coming months. This is Chris with Phone Arena, let's get right into this. A lot can and should be said about the G Pro 2's exterior. For starters, this is one sweet looking device, even though it's unlikely to win consumers' hearts on looks alone. LG hasn't used truly premium materials with the build of the device, but there is simply no way that one would confuse this for anything less than a top of the line phablet. Starting with the front, we have very narrow bezels all around, so this is a relatively conservative device in terms of its dimensions. We also simply have to point out how light and well balanced the G Pro 2 is. At 6.07 ounces, this is possibly the lightest phablet in its class and it isn't top nor bo bottom heavy like some devices we've come across. In other words, while this will never be seen as a true one-handed device, it's still more comfortable to use than quite a few phablets in this size class. But anyways, those aforementioned bezels all have a fancy texture which shimmers under light, much like the back of the Nexus 4. In comparison, the rear of the G Pro 2 is a bit less intriguing. The plasticky shell has something of a mesh texture which doesn't exactly scream premium but it does feel kind of practical. Moreover, the G Pro 2 borrows the rare placed volume and power buttons from the LG G2 and these are worth a moment to discuss because they have seen some noteworthy improvements. For starters, they are now far less flush with the surface and you can make them out by touch alone, which definitely helps. What's more, they have a roughly double travel time upon impact and you don't have to push too hard to get feedback from them. We never quite warmed up to the rare combo on the LG G2, but the G Pro 2 definitely begs a rematch. The Quad AG Displays Madness surely appears unavoidable at this point, but the G Pro 2 won't be the device that pushes that frontier for LG. This means that you're getting a 1080 by 920 pixel resolution with that 5.9 inch glass or some 373 pixels per inch. This isn't just a good display, it's downright beautiful. But an attractive display often comes at the expense of proper color calibration and the IPS panel on the G Pro 2 is no exception. Brightness at 420 nits and gamma at 2.17 are both satisfactory, but color reproduction is, strictly speaking, incorrect. With a core temperature of almost 8000 kelvins, this is not the most accurate of panels, though color deviations from the targets are not that extreme. But whites are bluish and this does extend to grays as well, which is kind of unfortunate. First things first folks, the LG G Pro 2 comes with the very latest Android KitKat update, version 4.4.2. LG has, as always, slapped its own proprietary skin on top and has added a considerable amount of extra code that allows for all the extra features you get with the software. But while this is an extremely feature-filled package, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing solution out there. Speaking of features, you get quite a few useful ones. Perhaps one of the most important ones is a special one-handed mode accessible by swiping left or right on the software navigation keys, though it is often tricky to get it out. This will fire up a miniaturized version of your screen, which allows you to get to previously impossible to reach areas of the 5.9 inch screen with just one hand. LG also includes a one-handed mode for its dial keypad and its keyboard, which essentially allows you to shift their position to the left or right for easier access. Another phablet-centric feature is what LG is calling Dual Window, which basically allows you to have two fully functioning apps side by side at the same time by just long pressing the back key. Last but surely not least in LG's book is the new knockout feature that the company has been promoting heavily. Knockout, as the name suggests, allows you to set up a certain combination of up to 8 knocks that will serve as your password. You then just tap on the display in the correct order and it will power on even from a powered off state. No code will work in any area of the screen, which sure is a nice bonus. Unfortunately, while the South Koreans are boasting about how secure this makes your phablet, we can't quite agree. For 
for one, unless you go for the maximum 8 knocks, it's quite easy for somebody to remember your combination by just looking over your shoulder. Moreover, tapping 8 times just takes too long, you're just better off with a passcode really. The LG G Pro 2 is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to performance. That's honestly not surprising in the least, seeing as it packs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 chipset with 4 Crate 400 cores sticking at 2.3 GHz and a powerful Adreno 330 GPU. Equally as impressive are the generous 3 GB of RAM. Summed up, these internals are likely to ensure that the G Pro 2 stays relevant throughout the year. And why wouldn't they? The phablet runs crystal smooth with barely any hiccups in just about every scenario we tested out. Whether it's browsing, multitasking or just doing some gaming, the G Pro 2 has what it takes. Even the newest, most fancy apps run fluidly with a sufficiently high frame rate at all times. And by the way, the G Pro 2 is the first of LG's newer flagships that does not cheat on the benchmarks. Lastly, and at least at this point in time, the G Pro 2 comes with 32GB of built-in storage at minimum. What's more, our Korean version of the phablet has a micro SD slot under the removable shell, though we're kind of unclear whether this perk will make it to the international model. The G Pro 2 comes packing two browsers, the built-in in-house solution by LG itself and Google's time-tested Chrome. Now, we're obviously heavy invested in Chrome at this point and we quite like having our history shared across our many devices and we'd usually take our chances with it. But we've gotta say that we gave AOG's browser a try and it definitely is a choice to consider, especially if you aren't invested in the competitor's product already. It is as fast and it's also the slightly more feature-filled solution of the two with extras such as offline reading and a capture O coming in handy every now and then. The former is rather self-explanatory but the latter begs for a clarification. Capture O essentially allows you to take a screenshot of an entire page regardless of what you're looking at and how far you scroll in. As for connectivity, the usual flagship suite is present. We have Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi, NFC, GPS and even slim port support for connecting the phone to an external monitor. Perhaps most impressively, the G Pro 2 also has LTE advanced connectivity, though very little of the world currently has the needed infrastructure to facilitate the blazing fast speeds of the latest generation standard. LG has taken the already excellent 30 megapixel unit from the G2 flagship and has even managed to improve upon it. The optically stabilized camera touts a new generation of the Shake Free tech called OIS Plus. As far as we're aware, the upgrade is a software one and has nothing to do with hardware. It's hard to tell how much of a difference OIS Plus brings to the table, but we'll make sure to find out and report back. So let's talk stills. Despite an overcast day, the snapper on the rear of the G Pro 2 performed admirably. The basics, like core reproduction, exposure settings, level of detail and noise were all excellent. Shots truthfully represented what we're seeing with our own eyes and even at 100% crop we found a great amount of fine detail. It's not all champagne and roses of course and the software is obviously susceptible to errors in judgments from time to time. In one scenario a shot came out with a severe purple tint but that was actually an isolated incident that never occurred again. What we really liked about the G Pro 2's camera is that low-light photography is definitely not out of the question thanks to the extremely potent LED flash on the back. Even in complete darkness, still came out with a very high level of detail and tolerable amount of noise, all the while the usual coldness found in such snaps is compensated for. On the offside, the colors do pop a tad too much and we've had scenarios where the software simply butchers what could have otherwise been a passable low-light shot, especially when using the intelligent auto mode. In terms of video, the G Pro 2 offers quite some options. 4K video capture is available and you can even shoot 720p clips at 120 frames per second. But while 4K video capture offers some seriously crisp results, 720p clips shot at 120fps unfortunately look as if shot at 360p. Still, if you're looking for something a bit more practical, you can always go for 1080p capture at 30 or 60 frames per second. Regardless of what you go for, you can rest assured that the resulting footage will be shake free thanks to an excellent OIS module. Out of the box, the G Pro 2 comes with the usual suite of LG made multimedia apps like the gallery and video and music players. These all perform their basic functions quite well, even though they're a bit on the heavy side performance wise. This load on the hardware however is partially exempt since they offer a tad more functionality than their stock counterparts. You can, for example, zoom in videos with LG's video player and that does come in handy every now and then. Speaking of video, it goes without saying that LG's beautiful 5.9 inch display is an absolute pleasure to watch video content on. The versatile chip underneath has the tools to render even exacting 1080p clips with niche encodings. 
Moreover, the hi-fi speaker on the back is quite potent, even though we are that disappointed with LG over the fact that it decided to skip on stereo sound. That's because devices of this size are among the best positioned to take advantage of stereo audio. Making calls with the G Pro 2 brings no nasty surprises whatsoever. Both the microphone and the in-ear speaker are extremely loud and the cost in loss of clarity will be worthwhile for most. That said, we do have to point out that there's some distortion and we've definitely had better. Still, the tablet carries out its underlying function with a decent level of finesse and certainly performs above average. Equipped with a big 3200 mAh cell, the G Pro 2 reminds us a lot of the LG G2 in terms of how long it lasts. Sure, the bigger display absolutely means more power drain, yet the slightly larger capacity of the user-replaceable unit should at least partially mitigate the impact on overall uptime. As with the G2, standby and talk time on a 3G network are excellent and browsing is pretty decent as well. It's only when you have to call up on that power-hungry Adreno 330 that you can see the life of the battery get siphoned out as if from thin air. But that's just how things are at this point, as gaming is definitely battery's least favorite occupation. The LG G Pro 2 is a great device, and it honestly feels kind of needless to try and turn this into a spear of accolades, as glamour for the sake of glamour doesn't seem to be the goal that the LG engineers behind this excellent tablet had in mind when building it. Instead, the G Pro feels like one of those devices built to last. So are there any weak sides to the G Pro 2? Of course, we definitely wish that LG treated us to a set of stereo speakers and we're far from completely content with the way the company goes about its proprietary software, but we kind of think that that's a small price to pay for what you get in return and we can't help but recommend this device, especially if you're browsing the tablet section. But obviously, there's also the competition to consider. The most likely rival, the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, comes in a package that can definitely make the G Pro 2 sweat, as it's an equally potent smartphone in both the performance and camera departments. It's a smaller one at 5.7 inches, which makes it a bit more manageable, but not by an awful lot. The Note 3 also comes with S Pen stylus support, an emission that may cause the G Pro 2 with the productivity-oriented crowd. Another likely competitor is the HC One Max. It's a noticeably larger tablet and it's a generation behind the performance front, not to mention that its optically stabilized ultra pixel camera kind of lags behind the 30 megapixel unit on the G Pro 2. Even if a fingerprint sensor is a sought after feature for you, we'd still say that LG's tablet is seriously worth your consideration. This was Chris with Phone Arena, thank you for tuning in.